Good morning, everyone. It's Friday. Good morning. Feel free to say good morning, <laughs> Jenny. Good morning. Ignorant, Just in say. awe of your lovely voice. Um, it's nice to have you with us, and thanks for sharing your thoughts and your comments, and uh, for meditating on God's Word with us these mornings as we uh, read the Psalms together. The Psalms, which speak for us as well as to us, and are this great processing and expression of emotion uh, uh, as we uh, as we read them. They help us to pray. They're the book of Hebrew prayers and um, David's expression of praise. So we're going to read Psalm 8 together for the last time this morning and I uh, hope you've been meditating on it and reflecting on it this week and uh, and just on the goodness and the majesty of God. Um, so shall we read it? Yep. Yeah. O oh Lord, our oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. You're going to sing that for us one more time? Oh. Just for, for kind of, you know, Every, finish the week up. Everybody will switch off. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Thank you. <laughs> From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. All flocks and herds and the beasts of the field. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So we spent this week in this, in this beautiful psalm, book ended by David's praise, this outburst of praise. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Um, and we've looked at the transcendence of God when I uh, consider your heavens, the work of your, just your fingers, what you've created, the stars and the sun and the moon and that you've set in place, uh, just the way you've modeled the universe. As David saw that, he considered the amazing beauty and power and transcendence of God. And then he moved to the imminence of God. What is man that you're mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? And uh, we, we thought about the fact that, that this also then projects forward to Jesus and to, to Hebrews um, uh, and, and the speaking of Jesus, who is made lower than the, than the angels. And everything has been placed under his feet and he's been crowned with glory and honor and how this is a, a messianic psalm and as it points to Jesus and the fact that he was made lower than the angels, that he lowered himself to death, even death on a cross. And the old version of the Bible, the King James Version, says, what is man that you visiteth him? Um, that, that What is man that you they descended and became one with us, the incarnation of God. And as we approach Easter, we think of this as Jesus came and, and was born and, and born to die and, and came to die on a cross for us. This amazing imminence of God, that God is Emmanuel, God with us. We also consider how, how um, God uses the weak things of this world to, to confound the wise and the, the weak things to, to show his strength. And we looked at the, this verse too that Jesus himself quoted from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise um, because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger how in God's kingdom it's often uh, it's often introverted it's often upside down in that God uses seemingly small and insignificant things including children and young people uh, to proclaim his glory and to show his power and ultimately how that happened on the cross when Jesus was despised and rejected and the infamous infamy of the cross and the shame of the cross. And yet it was through that apparent weakness and defeat that Jesus gained the ultimate victory. Jenny reminded us of how he did all of this for the joy set before him. And that joy was not the joy of glory or the joy of being in the presence of, of the Father and the Holy Spirit. That joy was us for the joy of releasing us and restoring us into a relationship with God, that for that joy, Jesus endured the cross because he cares for us so much that he 
would lower himself and condescend himself so that he might have a relationship with us and that's what drove him uh, through this whole thing. So that's what we've been looking at this week and uh, looking at the, the majestic power of God and uh, how God has placed everything under our feet but ultimately because we are carriers of the image of God as well he has placed his glory on us and we are given ultimate value and purpose in life because God made us and he made us in his image, the Imago Dei, um, but also that this points to Jesus. So Jenny, you wanted to just finish out the week a little bit, just reflecting on the subject of praise and... Yeah, I mean, the this um, this song has bookends, doesn't it? It starts and finishes with this exclamation, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. I think you should sing that. Every time you say no. it, you have to sing it. You're not allowed to say it. No. You have to sing it. I've done it. So, anyway, <laughs> um, one commentator, um, a Hebrew scholar called Robert Aldner, said um, that this shows that while God has given us dominion over um, the earth and the sea and the um, creatures on the earth and in the sea, our primary um, purpose is not to work the land, to have dominion. Our primary purpose is to worship God. That is the primary thing that gives us purpose and life and meaning. Um, so I think it's important to, to look at that in, in, in light of that. And, um, and how can we praise God? We can praise him, obviously, with our life and just living a, a life that gives him glory. We can praise him with songs and worship, which is partly also why we've included um, music with these devotionals. And music is important, isn't it? Um, Johann Sebastian Bach, the famous composer, said, The aim and final end of all music should be none other than the glory of God and the refreshment of the soul. And it does that, doesn't it? It refreshes our souls but it gives glory to God as well. So um, I find as well when I'm um, in, in the dumps that um, just worshiping God lifts me, as I'm sure you do too. Jeff will come in the kitchen if I'm cooking and I'll have um, Rich Mullins or Twyla Paris on. He'll say, oh, we know something's going on if you've got them on, which isn't strictly true. I listen to them um, other, at other times as well. But um, it, it lifts our soul and it lifts us above um, our preoccupations and our little things. And it, it draws our eyes to the heavens, to the ma majesty of the name of God. And that is our primary purpose, isn't it? Um, R.C. Sproul, am I saying his name right? Yeah. He says, we do not segment our lives, giving some time to God, some to our business and schooling, while keeping parts to ourselves. The idea is to live all of our lives in the presence of God, under the authority of God, and for the honor and glory of God. That is what life is all about. Um, so that, you know, praise doesn't is, is music, but it's not just music. It's living our lives to the glory of God, living lives that bring him honor and glory. And not only that, but also living with a consciousness of his presence, a consciousness, a mindfulness of him, like Jesus was mindful of us on the cross, that um, as we um, go about our daily tasks, that we are mindful of him, like Brother Francis, who we've talked about a lot, who he said, I just scrub the floor for the glory of God. Just everything I do. Brother Lawrence, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, sorry. Brother Francis or somebody else. <laughs> Brother Lawrence. You can call him Francis if you want. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't care. But anyway, Brother Lawrence, uh, he talked about practicing the presence of God, just always being mindful of the presence of God. And that, again, that lifts our eyes up to, to God, lifts our eyes to the heavens, lifts our eyes to the majesty of his name. Yeah, and the Westminster Shorter Catechism asks the question, what is the chief end of man? Why are we here? And the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. That's why we're here. That's why we were made, to glorify God and to praise him. And uh, when we do that, then we are fulfilling our chief purpose. Our chief end um, uh, is, is to worship God and to, to uh, honour him. Um, so, O oh Lord, how, our Lord, how majestic is your name in, in all the earth. Thank you, God, that you are both transcendent and imminent. And we want to reflect back to you the praise and the glory that you are 
due and that is your worth. And may we do that today and into this coming weekend uh, in the way that we act, in the way that we speak, in the things that we do, even the everyday mundane tasks can be done to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe have a little prance around your kitchen and mm -hmm. sing this song, mm -hmm. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We're going to pray as we finish out the week. You want to pray? Okay. Father, we thank you so much for your living word that gives us life and hope and courage. And we just pray that we can take this song with us so we can internalize it and live it, Lord God. We thank you that you see us, that you're mindful of us in everything that we do. And uh, we just pray that our lives would be lived to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great weekend and um, see you in church on Sunday online. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see you on Monday again for these devotions. God bless you.